All right, in this video, we're going to run the ispatial synthesis flow in Cadence Genus. Now, you'll recall that we ran a prior synthesis flow that we used in order to build a floor plan, and we're going to now incorporate that floor plan into the synthesis flow in order to improve the power usage, timing, and area usage of our circuit. So here is our script. It's called run.tickle. And you'll see that the script looks very similar to the prior script that we ran uh, at the top. We're loading primarily headers and setting some environment variables. Now, there are a couple of things that we're going to do a little bit different in this particular flow. Uh, we are setting up our environment to run the spatial effort. So we set an environment variable for uh, uh, opt spatial effort extreme. Uh, and we set a directory for the Innovus uh, flow to run in. Uh, this iSpatial flow is going to use both Genus and Innovus in order to do synthesis and placement simultaneously. We use the same uh, MMMC file that we used before, uh, all the same lefts. Uh, and I'm setting a variable here that says use underscore scan underscore seeks underscore four underscore nine underscore DFT, and I'm setting that to false. And this is going to stop scan chains from being exerted, uh, sorry, scan flip flops from being inserted into logical paths. Uh, I found that this causes problems with the synthesis flow. Now, in a subsequent video, I will look at using the DFT flow that will allow scan to be, uh, scan flip flops to be inserted. We load our RTL, same as before. Now, a primary difference is that we're going to read in a floor plan. So recall that we saved a .def file before. Uh, we're going to use this command to read that DEF in, uh, and we're going to check the floor plan to make sure that it's okay. Uh, and then we're going to run the same flow. We're going to do a sin generic, a sin map, and then ultimately a sin op that we'll look at in just a moment. Now, in each of these uh, synthesis flows, uh, we're adding a minus physical uh, as an option, again, representing that we're doing this in the I spatial flow. We're going to save those files to uh, an Innovus uh, database. Uh, and uh, we're going to use uh, the GUI tool uh, in order to look at the layout uh, and see what happens uh, as the synthesis flow is optimized. Now, it's always a good idea, or it can be a good idea, I, sh I should say, to add a breakpoint into the flow. So I'm adding a suspend step right before we begin the I spatial flow. Uh, and this is going to allow us a place to open up a GUI and take a look at what's been done in the flow. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Genus. And so I do this with the Genus command, uh, and I'm setting a log file and noting that this is now the spatial flow. While this is opening up, you can take a look and see the rest of the uh, of the script. Uh, after the iSpatial flow is done, we're going to write reports uh, and write the database out, uh, and also write a structural Verilog file out, and uh, that will end the Genesis flow. All right, so you can see the Genesis has loaded now. So we're going to go ahead and source our run script. Now, I should note that you can do every one of the commands in the run script manually, uh, but of course, uh, the script saves us some time. So once you know uh, that your uh, commands and options work, uh, the script is definitely the way to run it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and source the script, and you'll see that it will start and start running. Now, I'm going to pause right here and let this get to the point where uh, it suspends, and then I'll show you how to open up the GUI. Oh, you can see that I've already encountered an error. All right, so I didn't like my uh, command or my comment being at the end of the line there, so uh, I've moved the uh, comment uh, above the 
uh, command line that it was having a problem with, and I'm now going to run the script, and uh, you'll see now that the script is running fine. Uh, so I'm going to pause right here, uh, and we will uh, come back as soon as we have the suspend point that we said just a bit earlier. All right, well, as you can see, we've reached the point uh, in the process where we've gotten to our suspend. We're going to check a couple of things right now. So one, we're going to open up the log that we created. And we're just going to check to see if there are any errors in it. Of course, we have the original errors that we know about uh, having to do with my comment uh, that I had uh, made a mistake with. Uh, other than that, we should hopefully find uh, that there are uh, not any other errors. And that looks to be the case here. All right. So I'm going to open up the GUI using the command GUI underscore show, and you can see this is the uh, pre-placement of the uh, of the uh, gates uh, prior to the ispatial synthesis. Uh, it looks kind of neat. They've uh, been uh, placed uh, in a, uh, an abstract uh, artistic pattern here. Uh, uh, we're opening this up because after ispatial, it's going to move uh, the gates uh, into a more uh, optimal placement for area, power, and timing considerations. All right, with that, we are ready to uh, resume the flow. Uh, so this is now where it's going to go into, uh, if we look at our script, we're going to go into the ispatial flow, synopt-spatial, uh, uh, and when it's done, it's going to hopefully write out reports for everything. Uh, and it's also going to write our, out our design to a database uh, and write out the design to a Verilog netlist. All right, so we're ready to resume. And I will pause the video here and come back as soon as this is complete. All right, so we've come to the end of the process. We can see a couple of things. I've run a basic report power command uh, you can see that it's estimating the power. It's probably overestimating the power since we're not using a real signal. Uh, so there, the activity factor isn't necessarily correct. Uh, but nonetheless, we have an estimate for the power consumption. Uh, if we list what's in the directory, uh, you can see it's written out the log files. It's also written out the structural error log file that we, uh, that we want. Uh, and it's written to an end of a database called INBS. And uh, in the next video, we're going to look at how to load that database uh, and then uh, do a full placement route, including clock tree synthesis. Uh, for now, you can see uh, in the GUI, uh, the blue lines represent uh, where it took the initial or pre-placement uh, design uh, and it moved the gates around in order to better optimize timing, uh, area, and power considerations uh, using the ispatial flow. In the next video, we're going to take the Innovus database, we're going to load it into Innovus, uh, and we're going to do uh, clock tree synthesis and uh, routing and post-routing optimization uh, in order to give us the full physical design uh, that we will then import into Cadence. So we'll look at that next time.